Hey guys, today we are looking at one of the other releases by Diagostini. We've looked at some of these before. Uh, this is the T34. This particular one is representative of a vehicle in service with the 130th Tank Brigade 21st Armoured Corps in uh, the Soviet Union or Eastern Front in uh, 1942. Um, these are a 172 die cast uh, model, a um, little bit of plastic involved in them as well. Um, quite a sturdy little piece, uh, I must say. Um, they came with the periodical magazine uh, Combat Tanks Collection, uh, which, as I say, was out uh, certainly about 10 years ago. It's uh, You're looking at about uh, 2010, back to about 2005, that kind of time scale, roughly. Um, but the little uh, models that uh, they released with them were quite nice. They did a vast range of them, some modern ones. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was mainly World War II up to the modern period. I didn't really get any of the, uh, the modern ones, really. I did get a Challenger and an Abrams, but... I've given them to the young fella and he has uh, subsequently made bits of them. In fact, this one is uh, one I've given to him as well, although it seems to be um, uh, kind of toughing it out at the moment, but that's characteristic of a T-34 anyway, I suppose, really, isn't it? Um, the magazine itself wasn't great, I didn't think myself personally. Um, I really bought them for the uh, the models um, and I didn't really get an awful lot of the magazines. I got kind of the first uh, maybe six or ten um issues of it and one or two here and there after that but uh, i kind of drifted away from um, modeling and wargaming at that particular period so from that perspective i didn't really get an awful lot of them um and i kind of prefer making kits anyway myself but these are a very very nice little um option for somebody who maybe can't make a kit anymore or perhaps just wants to put together a lot of units uh maybe a you know tank battalions or something quite quickly um, and doesn't want to have to be painting and assembling and all the rest of it um, so they're a great option for that and they're quite sturdy as I say there and there's a little bit of weight to them so they uh, they sit well on a war games table in fairness to them um, detail is quite nice on them we'll have a look at the tank in a second this of course is a, as you can see is a T-34 and uh, quite a well-known uh, tank from the World War II period of course this one is armed with a 76 millimeter gun um, the T-34 itself was fairly advanced for its era and as you know, was, I presume, was uh, it was produced in uh, vast numbers uh, to a pretty excellent design really, uh, sloped armour, um, fairly uh, good balance of uh, firepower mobility and protection um, and a kind of uh, embrace some foreign ideas, particularly the Christie style suspension there which is probably a little bit better than um, what the Germans had. So mass production began around about 1940 um, it had a powerful gun, as I say, for its time, thick armour, and uh, obviously enough chem as a nasty surprise for the Germans uh, in the 41-42 period. Uh, General uh, Heinz Guderian uh, making a uh, particular personal reference to that. Um, not the most, uh, I mean, if you look at one of these up close, if you've ever had a chance to look at one in a museum, um, not, an awful lot of not an awful lot of finesse as regards the welding uh, seams and joints and that kind of thing, but um, that finesse was sacrificed for basically speed of production. Uh, so they're kind of very rough and ready uh, appearance really did belie their uh, effectiveness um, and I mean there, there are tales of these things being uh, assembled in the factory and literally driven out the front door and into combat um, but I suppose that's what you've got to do when the Germans are knocking at the door um, so the T-34 it was used in every role you can imagine really uh, from recovery vehicles to personnel carrier and reconnaissance and so on and it really did distinguish itself at every turn um, against the Germans um, so I suppose it's no except, uh, exaggeration uh, to say that the T-34 was probably the most de decisive tank of World War II. Um, and I mean, it's an exceptionally well-known vehicle. Uh, it was upgunned uh, later in the war to an 85mm version. Uh, with the turret was changed, to, if I remember correctly, fit in an extra crew member. Um, so, I mean, they did have some communication issues, uh, which kind of... Uh, Limited their effectiveness on the battlefield, um, but the, the 85 millimeter um, kind of did away with a lot of that by putting an extra crew member in the uh, in the, the turret and kind of relieving the uh, tank commander of a lot of the uh, kind of more erroneous uh, duties he had to do, um, as well as commanding the tank. Um, and the 85 millimeter version is uh, still in service in some uh, armies today, and I mean even more recently. I mean you'd see it in Middle Eastern conflicts. Uh, it was certainly in the uh, the Balkan conflicts in the 90s. I remember seeing them on uh, television. A lot of uh, World War II stuff turned up in that conflict, and T-34s were no exception. Um, and post-war, they were converted to do all sorts of things as well. I mean, there was anti-aircraft versions and so on and so forth. But anyway, that's the, uh, the T-34, and I'm sure you probably knew most of that already anyway. Um, but the model themselves, as I say, 
they're a nice little uh, little piece. Um, one thing I will say about these, um, particularly the Agostini ones, is uh, just be careful of the road wheels in particular. The, uh, the glue seems to dry out, or maybe it wasn't a very good quality glue in the first place, um, and they tend to... Uh, to break off sometimes. I've glued on one or, one or two of these ones and there's actually another loose one on the other side of this particular uh, model at the moment anyway. Um, but uh, nice little range, they really were. Um, as I say, I didn't get into an awful lot of them, but uh, of the ones I did see, I always thought they looked quite well. Uh, nice paint job on it there, nice detail. You know, in fairness, has the red star, um, some sort of unit marking, and presumably some sort of uh, political or uh, some sort of a slogan there on the side, or maybe it's just a, a name or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't speak Russian, unfortunately. But if anyone uh, there watching this video does speak Russian, I'd be uh, I'd be interested to find out what that actually says there. But anyway, um, so then you have some uh, tools there, some recovery tools, shovels and bits and pieces. Um, as I said, there is a loose wheel. I think it might be that one. Yeah, there it is. A uh, little drop of glue will sort that out. Um, the gun itself has a limited ele uh, element of uh, elevation. Uh, you can turn the uh, the turrets and you can actually remove the turrets as well if you're going to do any conversions. Um, these uh, little, uh, models actually are a very, very nice um, foundation for conversions, I must say. Um, there's a piece missing there for this. This is in service with my young lad and has seen some action on his bed bedroom floor. Um, some of the other uh, models that come out in this range, such as the uh, British Challenger tank and the Abrams, the more modern ones, which I wasn't particularly into, I gave to him, and uh, they've been reduced to basically um, <laughs> a wheelless, trackless, turretless, uh, plastic hull, really. Um, uh, but this one is uh, kind of uh, toughing it out at the moment, anyway. But um, nice little bit of detail on them, as I say. I mean, really, if you were looking to uh, put together a tank battalion, um you know quickly without having to be bothered painting and assembling i mean uh, these things are quite a good little option uh, i had a quick look um on ebay and a few other places just uh, before uh, commencing this video and they go for around about uh, anything from about 10 euros to 25 euros plus postage now that's uh 2018 prices, uh, it's what are we in, late March 2018, um, so, you know, convert accordingly to your uh, your currency and um, whatever uh, time of, uh, you're in at the moment when you're watching this. Um, but as I say, you could do a lot worse than uh, picking up a couple of these if you were trying to do uh, a very kind of a rapid uh, unit assembly, uh, if you had a, a war game coming up. Um, I don't actually do uh, Eastern Front stuff at all, really, so I only got the one of these, uh, and that's why it's been given to uh, the young lad. We do mainly uh, ETO um, stuff, uh, European Theatre of Operations, um, because that's what we have uh, a vast amount of um, models and uh, figures for. Um, but at the same time, as I say, uh, I do put together some uh, bits and pieces that are going to be a little, little bit outside that area, sometimes, but rarely. And when I saw this, I said, look, I'll just add that to it. Uh, but I've, as I say, subsequently, I've given it to him. But a nice sturdy little piece. Um, as I say, they used to come on a uh, base, a little black uh, diorama base, so kind of a standard affair to come with all of them. Um, in most cases, I was able to take them off with a an Allen key or um, some such thing. Um, in this particular case, it put up a bit of a fight, and uh, I had to take it apart with the pliers. As you can see, a little bit of damage to the hull there. Um, so that's why I do not have the diorama base uh, for this particular video, but I'd be removing it anyway for uh, for use. So, but uh, they do make a nice static display static display piece uh, or as I say um, from a wargaming perspective they're, they're quite handy and there is a bit of weight to them so I mean they don't slide around the uh, a war games table too readily so from that perspective they don't you know it's it's handy from that, that, uh, that regard it'll, it'll stay put um, whereas obviously some of the plastic kits tend to slide around sometimes particularly if you're in a confined space and you uh, you bump against it or whatever but um, as I say nice detail you know start a little piece a uh, nice camo pattern. You can, of course, uh, paint these up into something else if you wanted to. I mean, you could put a snow pattern on that, or maybe just that uh, basic standard green, kind of the early war Russian green. Um, quite easily it'll take paint. I have painted up one or two uh, other uh, vehicles from that particular range, um, which I, I use regularly enough. Um, and as I say, I have no problems with them. Um, little things that can just go wrong with it, just make sure that the gun is secure, maybe it'll drop a glue if that uh, has a tendency to pop out, this particular one doesn't, but on the Panther I've noticed that they do. Uh, the odd loose road, road wheel, as I say I have one there, but that's okay, a little bit of glue will sort that out. Um, you don't need any decals, they come pre-marked. Uh, pre, uh, 
um, and all the bits and pieces are painted in. The tracks themselves are sort of a rubbery vinyl type like you'd find in a plastic kit. A um, little bit of detail on them as well in fairness, I don't know if it'll pick that up, but that really does look quite like a, a T34 track, so uh, I can't really fault that. Uh, the camera isn't picking it up of course the minute I say it but however um, so all in all they're a nice little piece um, I mean not something I'd be going for every day of the week uh, I did pick up a lot of the uh, Tiger ones um, at the time and a few other bits and pieces here and there but really they're not something I'd go for an awful lot um, but if I was looking for standalone pieces um, like maybe a one or two Nash horns or a Brumbar or something like that a die cast is a great little option for that um, just to, you know, if you're putting a, an assembling units together. So basically, that guys, that's it. That's the T thirty four with the seventy six millimeter gun um, from the the Agostini release from the uh, early two thousands. Um, currently still available on eBay, as I say, I just checked. Other uh, manufacturers have um, released this particular uh, model as well under their names, such as uh, Eagle Moss. Uh, Atlas editions and, and a few others, um, but if you basically die, uh, die cast T thirty four, if you Google that, this will pop up eventually. As I say, going for around about the ten to twenty five euros mark. Um, uh, obviously, put postage on top of that, and you'd have one or two of these for your uh, your collection handily enough. Um, but as I say, that's it, guys. If you'd like and subscribe, we'll be getting back to. Uh, more normal bits and pieces, uh, kits and figure reviews fairly soon. We have a multitude of things to get through. Um, one or two aircraft kits, which are something we don't do an awful lot of. Uh, a lot of armor um, and a lot of figures to get through yet. So uh, there's a, a lot to be done. So look, guys, I'll leave you with that. If you would like and subscribe, we really do appreciate it. Um, just trying to grow the channel as we can uh, with our limited resources here. Uh, but at the same time, we do appreciate any uh, comments and any subscriptions and likes and stuff like that. So I'll leave you with that, guys. That is the T34 76mm by Diagostini. So until next time, I wish you all the best and we shall talk to you then. Take care for now.